and you buy it at 30, 40 cents on the dollar. And a lot of people will probably say, oh yeah, right, that's not possible. Well, I'll just tell you, you're not looking hard enough first off, but those opportunities exist out there. You know, if you can buy a house for, you know, 40 to 50, 60 cents on the dollar, you can buy land for that too. I promise you just got to look for it. Well, on the plane ride over, I listened to the audio book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I know it's, it's so cliche for those who have read or know that book, but man, that book really changed my life. And I kind of understood the direction that I wanted to go. So we bought a duplex in, um, in 2018, whenever I got right before I got home from that deployment and we lived in one side of it and rented the other side out. It really provided a, an amazing opportunity to one learn how to be a landlord and understand, um, you know, how to accept rent, how to fix properties, how to, um, you know, do all these different things that have kind of get there. They kind of laid the foundation to where I'm at now. So it was, it test, was like a good t- controlled test run where you can yeah. keep an eye on the property and everything. Yeah. Else. And it's almost like you're the, the, the poster child of uh, real estate investing, rich dad, poor dad, and bought a duplex to house hack. Like that's the, that's what everyone preaches to start. And, uh, how important yeah. do you think that is to to the success of, of to get going? Yeah, so I, I like to think of it as like real estate investing with training wheels. You know, if, if you're familiar with uh, the real estate investing space, I listened to another pod or used to listen to another podcast that was beneficial and uh, kind of developing me uh, called Bigger Pockets. And so, you know, they talk about this stack method where maybe you start with one single family house and, and then that turns into two or if from a single family house it turns into a duplex and then maybe your next one is a triplex and then maybe it's a fourplex and then a 10 unit apartment building so they, they kind of speak on how to build up um, a portfolio and so um, it, it just gave me the confidence to say hey I can do this and this isn't really rocket science you know when you start realizing how many times you can get paid off of a rental property it's kind of amazing. Um, so not only do you get paid your monthly cash flow, but you're going to get paid in appreciation and, and appreciation may not always be what it has been in the last two years, but right. historically speaking, it's about 6%, which is pretty dang good whenever you compare to the stock market over a hundred years, you know, with that being said, then if you have a tenant in there paying, um, you know, rent every month then you're going to get mortgage pay down. Uh, and then also the tax benefits that come along with, uh, with owning the property, you can depreciate the asset, which, you know, hopefully offset some of your, uh, income on the property so that that way you're not being taxed on that income. And so there's a schedule for that as well. So, um, you know, really you can get paid a, a number amount of times on one single property. Whenever I looked at that and I said, you know, you break it down and it's like, okay, Every night I go to sleep and I'm earn, I continue to earn money in my sleep. It kind of was just a no brainer as far as, um, you know, kind of developing this and wanting to move full steam ahead into it, you know, later down the road. So, yeah, I would say it was, it was monumental as far as, you know, the first property and just getting started. That's the hardest part, man, is just getting started. I think that brings up a great point. And it's funny because even 2018, 2020, people are like, oh, the market's going to crash, market's going to crash. And then they sat on the sidelines and saw this uh, historic run for someone that's like, well, should I just get started? Because, you know, I I see all these different headlines and it's a little bit confusing. What would you say to that person? And this is on the lane side or or maybe they just want to buy a house too. Who knows? I I would say that, you know, it's kind of like the old analogy, like when's the best time to plant a tree? Uh, you know, 20 years ago, when's the next best time to plant a tree is today. With that being said, you know, you can, you can sit and you can speculate, you know, and you can try to time the market, but the market will make a fool out of you every single time. So I want to hedge um, all my investments over the long term. So again, um, and what a lot of people may not understand is whenever I buy these properties, most of the time I'm buying them at probably, you know, between 50 and 70% of the value uh, of, of the property. Correct. So, before you buy it. Yep. So it. yeah. So a good example is let's say a house is worth a hundred thousand dollars all fixed up and it needs $10,000 in repairs. Well, the most I'm going to pay for that property off the bat is $70,000 because I want to be into it for 80% minus the repairs. And the reason I want to be into that property at 80% is because if I go to refinance, 
most of the time uh, a bank will, will finance up to 80% of the value of the property. So at that point, if I can be at that 80% or under it, minus the repair costs, I have no money of my own wrapped into the deal. And so, I, you know, I'll have some money on the front side of that, you know, putting into it and borrow it, maybe borrowing private money to acquire and fix the property. It's so tiny. It's, it's not even generally for me, um, you know, between five and 10% of the purchase price most of the time. So I'm really able to buy that property, fix it up and then go to a bank and then put a loan on that property for uh, 80% of the value and then go ahead and, and not have any of, of my own money wrapped up into the deal. With that being said, whenever I go to purchase the properties, it's really hard to lose money, you know, when I'm buying at such a steep discount. I hope you guys enjoyed this. My name is Jake Hofer and I'm a real estate agent out of the state of Illinois. And it's my goal to help 100 people buy their first farm. I've been doing that with the land podcast and clips like this every single Thursday and Saturday that are released here on the channel. And to be one of those 100 people, all you have to do is if you're in the state of Illinois and I can help you, I'd be happy to do so. Number two, if you want to get connected with someone that can help you, reach out and I'll be happy to get you in contact with an agent that I would personally do business with. And the last one is if you just simply learn something from the content we're putting out or you get inspired to take action, I want to know, get you out of that spreadsheet. I'm on a mission to help 100 people. Until next time, see ya.